Now we come to the part two of this presentation. In this part B, we should be covering the components of a hospital and introduction to evidence-based design for healthcare facilities. So the components of a hospital are, so we can classify the hospitals according to the levels of care. So we have a primary healthcare hospital, secondary healthcare hospital, tertiary healthcare hospital and an apex level of hospital which is like AIMS. We could also classify hospitals to their sizes, say a mini hospital which is less than 50 beds. We could have a mid-size hospital which is 50 to 250 beds, a big hospital from 250 to 500 beds and huge hospitals which are primarily not manageable more than 500 beds. So we could also have hospitals according to the specialities or the medical specialities we have. So we could have a hospital which is a pediatrics hospital, an eye hospital, a heart hospital according to the type of ownership. So we could have a private hospital, a public hospital and we could have elements and divisions of the hospitals. So the main divisions of hospitals are the administrative divisions, the outpatients divisions including the outpatient clinics, pharmacy and emergency reception areas. Then we have the diagnostic services divisions which includes the laboratories, the diagnostic areas including imaging, radiology, the therapeutic services division including the physical therapy, radiology, radiotherapy and internal medical treatment divisions including operation theatres, intensive care units, maternity units, central sterilizations departments and the inpatient division include patient wards, nurses stations and inpatient service support areas. So we have general services divisions including the kitchen, laundry, storages, workshops, mechanical services, mortuary, security, parking and landscape areas. Now we are detailing out the divisions further to see what are the components in each of the divisions. So in the administrative divisions, the components are reception hall, waiting area, registration area, treasury and accounts area, staff offices, general manager's office, staff lounge, nurse's office, the washrooms, etc. Then location, the location of the main administrative area should be close to the main entrance of the hospital, the entrance area, registration area, accounts should face the main entrance while the manager's office should be at the back for privacy reasons. So the area of the administrative department as per a US standard is for a 50 bed hospital it could be 214 meters square, for a 100 bed hospital it could be 363 meters square and for a 200 bed hospital it could be 567 meters square. So according to the World Bank these areas are for a 50 bed hospital it's 199 meters square, for a 100 bed hospital it's 328 meters square and for a 200 bed hospital it is 409 meters squares. While in India we give much lesser areas because maybe uh, due to computerization and due to uh, we, we give lesser space for each person to work in a space in a workstation. So the outpatients division, so the external components of an outpatient clinic are, so this division has consultation rooms, examination rooms, treatment rooms, waiting areas, staff areas and washrooms etc. So the location of an outpatients department should be next to the main entrance of the hospital, very close to the diagnostic areas and close to the pharmacy at the exit. So the area requirements for the outpatient areas are 215 meters squares for a 50 bed hospital, 
350 meter square for a 100 bed hospital and 540 meter square for a 200 bed hospital as per the US Public Health Service standard and the World Bank standard is for a 100 bed hospital the area is 345 meter squares for 200 bed hospital it's 505 meter squares now we come to the emergency reception the parts and components of the emergency are the entrance and the waiting area the registration areas the staff rooms the mini surgery room the test rooms the medical utilities room and the mini sterilization room so the location of the emergency is very very important and it should be close to the exit of the emergency very close to the radiology close to the pharmacy the labs and the central sterilization and it should have direct access to stairs and elevators so the area of the emergency department is for a 100 bed hospital it should be 100 meter square for a 200 bed hospital it should be 250 meter square so now we come to the diagnostic services divisions so the laboratories the parts and components of the laboratory are the work area the waiting area the sample room the cleaning room the staff offices so the most important labs in the hospital are the biochemistry lab the bacteriology lab the histology lab the pathology lab the serology lab the hematology lab and the microbiology lab location it should be very close to the emergency department and external clinics easily accessible from the internal areas of the hospital and easily accessible from the maternity and surgical departments and access from the central storages is also very important so the radiology division has the following components which is the x-ray rooms the control rooms and the waiting areas we also have the support areas like the staff offices the utility rooms the dark rooms the film viewing areas and storages so the location should be very close to the emergency department and external clinics easily accessible from internal divisions and a ground floor location is highly preferable so the areas for 50 to 100 bed hospital is 104 meter square and for a 200 bed hospital it could be 220 to 240 meter square so now we come to the divisions of the therapeutic services areas so the physical therapy areas has the following components and divisions the waiting areas the office the hydrotherapy areas the exercise rooms and the wash rooms so the location should be close to the main entrance of the hospital easily accessible from the external clinics easily accessible from the internal divisions and should be on the ground floor so the areas for 50 to 100 bed hospital could be 65 to 104 meter square for a 200 bed hospital it could be 155 to 255 meter squares so the internal medical treatment divisions includes the operation theaters so the parts and components of this division are the entrances storages preparation rooms excess areas operating theaters cleanup areas sub sterilization room supervisors room staff lockers change rooms etc so the location here is very important to be close to the intensive care divisions and should be touchable from both of them it should be very close to the central sterilization division of the hospital close to the inpatient wards and should be accessible from the emergency division of the hospitals so the areas as per the u.s public health standards are for a 50 bed hospital it could be 185 meter square for a 100 bed hospital it should be 360 meter squares and for a 200 bed hospital it could be 550 meter square intensive care units the parts and components of these divisions are the 
ICU space, the location should be close to the recovery rooms of the operation theatres. It should be easily accessible from the emergency divisions by the elevators and the area of the department must be designed for 5% of the hospital beds. The maternity division would have the following components. So we could have uh, the labor rooms, the delivery rooms, the caesarean section rooms, the cleanup areas, the storage areas, the sluice rooms, the corridors should be very wide and we could have storage spaces, workspaces. So now we come to the central sterilization divisions. The parts and components of this division are the workspace, receiving area, washing areas, supply storage. Location should be very close to the operation theatre and maternity division and should be easily accessible from the emergency division, laundry and central storages. So the area for central sterile supply department for a 100 bed hospital would be 65 meters square, for a 200 bed hospital it would be 110 meters square or 0.6 to 0.9 meters square per bed or 0.6 meters square for a large hospital and 0.9 meters square for a smaller size of a hospital. So now we come to the inpatient divisions. The parts and components of this division are the inpatient wards which are 11.5 meter square per bed or 8 meter square per bed. So this is the range. Then we have the washrooms, the bathrooms, the WCs, the sluice rooms, the nurses stations. So this should be not less than 12 meter square for a 30 bed ward. So we have treatment rooms which is 10 to 15 meter square for 60 patients day rooms which are 0.7 meters square per bed and not less than 15 meters squares. So then the nurses lounge should be if possible 12 meters squares then we have storage areas which is 8 to 12 meters square kitchen or a small pantry which is 12 meters square a doctor's duty room which is 15 meters squares so the most suitable nursing unit in a ward is a 30 bed patient unit. So a Nightingale ward is a type of a hospital ward which contains one large room without subdivisions for patient's occupancy. The Nightingale ward contains about 24 to 34 beds usually arranged along the sides of the ward. So the general services divisions includes the dietary division. Spaces in this division are storage room, kitchen, preparation and supply area, cleaning area. So the location here should be on the ground floor. It should be having a direct opening to the service entry and the area of the department are for a 100 bed hospital it should be 195 meters square. For a 200 bed hospital it should be 355 meters square. So housekeeping division, so the spaces in this division are offices, dirty linen, clean linen, storage, laundry and mechanical rooms. So the location should be on the ground floor, close to the central storages and the area for this department uh, for a 50 bed hospital it could be 150 meters square, for a 100 bed hospital it could be 180 meters square and for a 200 bed hospital it should be 270 meters square. General storages. So the spaces in this division are medicine storages, furniture storage, food storage, utility storage, archiving and journal storage. So the location should be on the ground floor, close to the housekeeping and dietary division, direct access from the service entrance and as per the US public health service standards for a 100 bed hospital the area should be to 60 meters square, for a 200 bed hospital the area is 520 meters square and generally the area of the storages is 2 to 2.5 6 meter square per bed. Mortuary division, location, 
it should be on the ground floor or on the basement floor the exit from the emergency entrance or service entrance the area as per the us standards is for a 50 bed hospital 25 meter square for a 100 bed hospital the area is 45 meter square and for a 200 bed hospital it is 70 meter square now the maintenance workshops these should be located on the ground floor or basement have a direct relationship with the service entry and the area of the departments as per WHO experts is for 50 bed hospital it should be 65 meter squares for a 100 bed hospital the area would be 90 meter square. So entrances and circulation so the entrances we have the patient visitors entrances the external clinics entrances the emergency entrances the service entrances and the mortuary exit. So evidence based design. So evidence based design is proactive evidence based healthcare facility design is an important and growing trend in healthcare architecture. There are a number of reasons for this growth including the need to replace the aging facilities a competitive marketplace for healthcare services, the need to improve staff and material flow to achieve operational efficiencies, the ability to accommodate technological advances, consumer demand for privacy and family centered care. And there is a need to reduce preventable hospital acquired injuries and infections. Evidence based design is a process used by healthcare professionals in the planning, design and construction of healthcare facilities. An evidence based designer along with an informed client makes decisions based on the best information available from research. From project evaluations and from evidence gathered from the operations of the client, evidence based design should result in demonstrated improvements in the organization's utilization of resources. Measuring the effect of design is a very complex task and the process of planning, designing and constructing a new healthcare facility can take from 3 to 9 years depending on the scope of the project and where the facility is being built. This time gap affects both what is measured and reported and whether or not any measurement is obtained at all. Best practices. In addition to using research that is available, clients can access other information to help them determine the best design for their facilities. Clients can find other sources of information in the following ways. Requesting positive and negative lessons learned from other clients who had similar issues, obtaining copies of examples of unpublished research, attending a conference where both clients and designers are presenting, asking for contact information from other clients who have worked with the design company, observing the current environment with established evaluation criteria. Healing environments. Generally healing environments are considered to be a place to heal the mind, body and soul. A place where respect and dignity are woven into everything. A place where life, death, illness and healing define the moment and the building supports those events or situations. The Center for Health Design clearly defines evidence-based design as the process of basing decisions about the built environment on credible research to achieve the best possible outcomes. Basic components of healing environments include air quality, thermal comfort, noise control, privacy, light, views of nature, visual serenity for those who are very ill, visual stimulation for those who are recovering. Over the last decade, those working 
with healing environments have expanded this list to include access to nature and positive diversions. Access to social support, options of choice which is control, elimination of environmental stresses such as noise, glare and poor air quality. Patients and staff safety and elimination of stress remain at the top of any definition of a healing environment. But a healing environment is more than safe buildings. It is one which has patients, visitors, staff and supporting their, them during the time when they are in the building. So we've come to the end of this module. Hope you have understood these very complicated concepts. Please stay tuned for further modules. Thank you.